What's going on everybody? This is Al from PlaybookGamer.com and in the last Dynasty video we went through our Season 3 offseason. We've done a lot of recruiting, we've done position changes, we've done a lot of transfer stuff which was a lot of fun and now we are going into our preseason for Season 4. We are officially in the SEC so a lot of things are ratched up to 11 more or less caduce to those who get the reference. So that's what we're going to do today, the preseason. So let's go ahead and start by going to preseason options and look at the schedule. I have already made the schedule, and I have scheduled 11 games. Up to this point, and honestly the past several dynasties, I normally schedule 12 at a time just to make the schedule harder. But somebody made a really good point. When you add a 12th game and you win that one, that kind of gives you a little bit of an advantage possibly over other teams that only schedule 11. Like 98% of the country schedule 11 games in NCAA football 06. So I'm going to do the same. So we got 11 games. Well, let's go through our schedule. Starting off, I thought it just made perfect sense to play Arkansas. This is the team that we swapped with in the SEC. So I figured that'd be a really cool opening matchup. We got an open week behind that one. And then after that, we are heading up to Columbus, Ohio to take on the Buckeyes. I figured that would be an awesome, really cool, tough, non-conference game. Then we got another open week. Again, normally if I had a 12th game, I'd put it like here or right here. But after that, we're going to head right to the heart of our SEC schedule. Starting off with Alabama. Then I got one more non-conference game. Now this week seven, I could not adjust this to save my life. We have a handful of options. I picked SMU because they were a Conference USA team. They were in our division, so they were kind of a, a rival, more or less. So I just went ahead and picked them. But trust me, I tried to pick all of these, try to remove them, just some things. I just couldn't. So I wanted one little cupcake game before we head into the real heart of the schedule. Then we're going to get right back into the SEC the rest of the way. At number 15, Auburn. Then number 16, Florida's coming up here. going to be a nice rematch from that classic battle we had the previous season. Then we got Ole Miss at Kentucky, at number seven, South Carolina, at Mississippi State, and we are going to end the season no better way than a game against our biggest rival in number 19, LSU. And thankfully, I don't have a non-conference game at the end of this to kind of make things kind of goofy. I always want to end it on a conference game. I know there's a couple of rivalries out there like South Carolina, Clemson, they got the last game of the season, stuff like that. But for us, I always want to finish the regular season against LSU. So as you can see here, we got an A-plus schedule. We have five ranked games. I think that's more than tough, more than doable, but it should be a whole lot of fun. I'm really excited about this schedule. All right, next up, let's go to red-shirting players. I have already red-shirted, so let's go through each position. Starting off with quarterback, we only have one option, and that's Aaron Stuckey. And, of course, we are not going to redshirt him. He is our starter for the next couple of seasons. Next up, we got a halfback. We are going to redshirt the true freshman five-star product, Elijah. We're going to nickname him Vey, Elijah Vey. We'll just shorten the last name. Uh, a couple of guys mentioned that as a good shortened nickname for him, and that's what we're going to go with, Elijah Vey. We're going to redshirt him. We're not going to need him, of course. We got three guys above him. They're going to do a whole lot of damage for us. Of course, Larry Williams, the uh, reigning Heisman winner. Then he got Montario Hardesty, the uh, transfer from Tennessee. Then he got Christian Ducre behind that. So we got a really good group in this unit. Next up, we got fullback. Now, I still have it as a balanced offense, meaning I got to have two fullbacks on the roster at all times. But it still allowed me to redshirt the backup fullback, which is a true freshman, Jordan Mooney. So we're going to do that, and we're going to look at the depth chart a little bit later, and I'll show you what I've done here. Next up, we got wide receiver. I'm not going to redshirt Cooper or Amos. This is the true freshman. He's just too talented not to keep off the field, or keep on the field, I should say. And we are going to redshirt the junior, Eli Collins. And I should have left, kept up the list of transfers that we picked up. Out of, like, the 10 guys we picked up, I think I kept eight. Three of them are probably going to make an impact overall. But Eli Collins, I'm pretty sure he was a JUCO kid we got in the offseason. If not, he's a transfer. I don't remember. Either way, I don't think we're going to need him this season. Next up, tight end. We only got one option to redshirt, and that is Robert Wright. And we're not going to redshirt him, obviously. Next up, tackle. We are going to redshirt the true freshman, Bernardo Presley. I think it's a good situation 
to have a bit of a separation between him and a couple other guys. For example, the sophomore Joseph Russell and then a red shirt freshman Curry Johnson. Get Presley behind them, and I think we're going to have some really good depth here in the next couple of seasons. And these two guys behind Johnson and Russell are just going to back him up. Next up, guard. We are going to redshirt the true freshman Marie Stewart. As you can tell, we got a bunch of dudes that look the same, but our two best guys are Parenton and Jones. Those are going to be our starters. So I think we're going to be fine redshirting Stewart this season. You go to center. This was a position I could have made some adjustments here. I could have redshirted Stevens. He was our starter last year, but it's pretty obvious. He is our best center. The only thing that made me a little hesitant to want to redshirt him was his awareness is still the worst of the three, and I really believe that impacts high snaps, and we're in the shotgun quite a bit in our offense, but I still think he needs to be our center or our, our starter, so that's where we're going to leave him at. At least we got some decent depth behind here. If I'm not mistaken, I think this is the kid that transferred as well. Again, I should have made that list. I should have put that somewhere, but that's okay. Then we got defensive end. This is another situation where I could have redshirted possibly. We got some decent depth. Now, Reggie Thomas, he is the transfer, I'm pretty sure, from Ohio State or NC State. It's one of the two and that we moved down. He was a middle linebacker, moved him to defensive end. Now we got a really good defensive end. Now we're going to have him and Nixon start. I could have redshirted Nixon, but I thought he just played too well for us last year. I don't want to punish him just because what worried me a little bit, because we got two seniors right here. They're going to be gone. They're going to be great backups this year, but we're really going to be hurting a defensive end. So this is going to be a priority position for us in recruiting. But I just didn't want to punish Nixon. I just didn't want to do it. Plus, these guys rotate quite a bit throughout the season. Defensive tackle, defensive end. Uh, really shuffle in a lot of guys out, usually due to exhaustion. All right, defensive tackle. This was a very simple one. We're going to redshirt the true freshman, Antoine Finch, the big, massive individual. Uh, we're not going to need him this year, though, but this is another position of need for sure because we got three seniors, and we're going to need all the help we're going to get next season. Hopefully, we can get a couple transfers. Outside linebacker, pretty simple situation here. We're going to redshirt the true freshman, Christian Murray, as you can tell, we got a bunch of dudes that are pretty much like him, more or less, but we're going to redshirt him and get him ready for the next season because we got a couple seniors that will be gone. Middle linebacker, this was another pretty simple decision. We got three true freshmen. I don't think we're going to need them this year. We're going to have the same one two punch we had last year in Smith and in Charles. Hopefully, I can get by with just two middle linebackers. If somebody gets hurt, I can take a red shirt off somebody cornerback another pretty simple situation we're going to redshirt Kyron Penley the true freshman as you can tell we got a whole lot better players than him Sanders Johnson and Gibbons are going to be doing most of the load at cornerback free safety another pretty easy decision we're going to redshirt the true freshman John Lerman I hope I said that correctly Bale he, I think he just has to be our starter he played so well for us and what's funny they got him as a first team all-american we'll see if he holds up to that it'd be cool if he does Strong safety, another pretty simple decision. We have one guy we're going to redshirt, true freshman, Aaron Barnhart. This was a bit of a weakness here in terms of recruiting. I was hoping he'd be a little bit better than that, but apparently he's not. And a lot of it has to do with his awareness at 52, which is absolutely terrible. Uh, but what we're going to do is really focus on recruiting. If we can find an absolute stud here, we're going to need him. But we got two freshmen and a junior, so I don't know. We'll figure something out. Kicker, we're not going to redshirt this dude. He is our true freshman stud out of Alabama. Uh, Bruce Simmons, this is his position, starting position, for the next three to four years. Then we got true sophomore Ellis Wilcher. We got one dude, so we don't have to redshirt there. All right, next up, let's go over to rosters, and let's go over to depth chart. And not going to be a whole lot different from what you saw, but there's a couple things I want to point out. Very simple with Stuckey, a quarterback, he's our starter. We're going to have Stewart behind him, a new backup. I put him as our backup because it's pretty obvious he's the second most talented of the bunch and he has by far the best arm of the bunch a 95 throw power 90 accuracy there is no other quarterback on our roster that comes close to his arm skill so he is a great pocket passer he's really small but that's okay uh, but if something happens to stucky i think we're gonna be okay we'll adjust accordingly halfback will be pretty simple it's gonna be williams hardesty and decray I haven't figured out how I'm going to distribute that, but Williams is an impact guy. He's going to carry most of the load. It just makes sense to give him the ball quite a bit. Then he got fullback. We got Tuyo. That's obvious. 
But since we've redshirted the backup fullback, I am going to put a couple of our backup tight ends in at fullback. But this is only situational when we get our second string in there. And our offense isn't going to change a whole lot anyways. And we're only going to have like one, maybe two formations that need a fullback anyways. Wide receiver, here's how we're going to do it. Cooper is going to be my X receiver. He's going to replace Gidros. We need a surefire dude on the left side. That's just kind of the way my uh, passing game works. Batiste is going to be our Z receiver. I think that's no different than what we had last year. And then our true freshman, Luke Amos, is going to be our new Cooper. He's going to be our new slot receiver. I got to set up like that. That way I don't have to fool with formation subs and such. So it's going to be a lot on him. Now, thankfully, he can really catch. 88 for a catch for a true freshman is really good. But I really need somebody who can catch the ball in the slot. So that's why I put him there. Plus, all three of these guys have back got the same speed. 91, 91, 92. So I'm perfectly fine with that. And then we got our backups with McDonald and Foster and so on and so forth. Tight end. This is another interesting one I want to point out. Of course, Wright is our number one. I'm going to put Walker. He is technically our number four guy, if you want to go by overall rating. But he's the fastest of the bunch. And he has... The best hands of the bunch. 80 catch, 82 on the acceleration. I want to get this guy involved in the offense. He's just too talented not to get him involved. So we're going to have, I don't think I'll have to adjust a formation or two. I may have to. We'll see. But we're going to get him the ball a time or two. But So between him and Walker, you're going to see our tight ends get involved a little bit more than usual. And then behind him is Garcia and the other guy, Kessler. Those are going to be our third and fourth string guys. Now, this guy's really big. I may have him in, like, our goal line set. I may have him there for run purposes so he can run block and such. But we're going to deal with that in the beginning of the next video. Left tackle, pretty simple here. Nothing crazy. We're going to have Russell. We're going to have Jones. We're going to have Stevens. We're going to have Parenton and Johnson. And we only have one senior on the front line, and that is Parenton. The rest of these guys are really young. Sophomore, sophomore. Got the senior, you got a freshman, and you got another sophomore. Just a really good position to be in. Oops, and I completely messed that up. My bad. Sophomore, 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 senior, and a freshman. There you go. That makes more sense. Now let's talk about the defense. Again, not going to be a whole lot of difference. Thomas is our new left end. I've been playing 06 for way too long, and the left end tends to just be more productive than the right end for me. And so that's why I put Thomas there. So Nixon is our new right end, even though it says left end. But these guys are going to be interchanging quite a bit throughout the season. Again, just due to how exhausting uh, defensive ends can get. Uh, defensive tackle, very self-explanatory. I just got them down in order. Uh, linebacker, this was a tough one. Left out linebacker, I got Peter Hollis. There was like a three-player race for this. They're all about the same. You see these guys right here. Technically, Carlson is the better of the three, if you want to go by overall. He's a little bit faster, but I need somebody who is pretty smart, because I normally don't use, I don't control the left outside linebacker a ton. I wanted somebody who was a little bit smarter, and Hollis is by far and away smarter of the bunch. Then you go over to tackle. He's a little bit better tackler than the other two. So I'm going to have Hollis over Carlson and Lindsey. Then you go over to middle linebacker, pretty self-explanatory. You got Smith and Charles. And I'm going to have Lindsey at the back end. And, oh, this may be one thing I did not adjust. Yeah, we'll leave Lindsey there. That's fine. All right, the right outside linebacker, Stamper, it's obvious. He is our best defensive player. Uh, I guess outside of Thomas, we'll find out who's going to be the most productive. But Lindsey's going to be behind him and then Hollis. So that is a good lineup at linebacker in general. Next up, cornerback. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to have Inky Johnson, the transfer from Tennessee. He's our new Israel route. He's our new number one. He's just the better overall corner on the team. And then we got Sanders. I need some height, at least a little bit on the field at all times, a corner. And he's by far our tallest corner that's decent. He's only six feet tall. Inky's 5'9", and Gibbons is only 5'6". So nothing really changes compared to last season, other than we got a new Israel route in Inky Johnson. So the Gibbons is going to be their nickel back a ton. Of course, he's going to do special teams, which we'll look at here in a little bit. Next up, we got free safety. Jonathan Bale, again, they got him as a first-team All-American. We got to have him starting, so this is pretty self-explanatory. We got Hughes behind him. Next up, strong safety, Larry Holden, very self-explanatory. He's by far our best strong safety. 
and they got him as a first team all american which again i think that's hilarious hopefully both of our safeties continue to play well but then we got harrison behind holden again very self-explanatory then we got kicker we only got one kicker so our punters behind him punter as our starter with the kicker behind him. Then we got kickoff return. Nothing's really going to change from last season. It's going to be Gibbons and Batiste. Just in terms of speed, we only got one guy that's far and away faster than everybody else, and that's Gibbons. But we got McDonald behind Batiste because McDonald's not going to play a ton. So we're going to at least give him as a backup role. Same with punt return. It's still going to be Gibbons, Batiste, and then McDonald. You got your kickoff starters. This one's going to be kind of tough. I got Wilcher over Simmons, but let's look at their ratings. You go over here to kick power and kick accuracy. Wilcher's got the better power, but Simmons has got the better accuracy. I still want to go with Wilcher, mainly because we don't punt a whole lot. And if we put Simmons as starting a kickoff, then Wilcher will never like ever get on the field. And I still kind of prefer power over accuracy on the kickoff. As long as I do my part... I want the power to do the rest. So I'm going to have Wilcher be our starting guy at the kickoff. A long snapper, always put backup centers there. And that is it. Now, for our captains, I always like to show this. You go to captains, you go over to rosters, you sort your column for awareness. It's usually your smartest dudes that are seniors. So Harris, Antonio Harris, a backup defensive end as a starter, as a, I'm sorry, a captain. Then you got Batiste as our offensive captain. So we got two senior guys. We know Batiste is going to contribute quite a bit, and Harris will come in as a backup. Let's look at program standards. We finally got it down kind of low, but we had some issues last year with this. But we got 45 points to play with. Maybe we'll have a couple backups that get in trouble, and we can really punish them hard to get this thing down. So, But we're still in good shape here. I'm not worried about getting infractions anytime soon. Now let's go over to Athlon Sports and check out what's going on across the country. Starting off, preseason polls. You got Oklahoma, Miami, USC, Virginia Tech, Florida State, Michigan, South Carolina, UCLA. And there we are, number 10 of Tulane. You look at the overall, we can sort the column. Looks like Florida State is by far the most talented of the bunch. You keep on going. We're down here somewhere. We're a B+. Plus. You go uh, over to offense. I always like to see who is pretty high up here. Looks like Florida State again looks really high. Uh, looks like Florida State is by far and away the most talented of the bunch. But, yes, they got them at number five in the country for whatever reason. Then you go to special teams. There's always going to be a bunch of good teams in that department. Let's go over to Heisman Watch. And there you go. Quite obvious. They would have Williams and Stuckey at one and two. Those were the guys that finished 1-2 and two last year. Hopefully we can keep them in the top five all season. It should be a lot of fun. But then we're going to have to go up against this kid right here, Antonio Hefner. We got a bad draw from the other division. We got Florida. We got South Carolina. We got Kentucky. And we ended up with two of their best on our schedule in Florida and South Carolina. So we're going to have to go up against this guy later on in the season. Then we got a Texas Tech quarterback, and we got a BYU quarterback let's go over to preseason all americans this should be interesting stucky and williams and i'm only i'm just kind of rushing through this i just want to see who else we got Balin holden again which i think is just comical but hopefully they can hold on to that you go to the second team i don't think we have anybody on here yes we do little anthony gibbons made the second team all american list good for him you look at the uh all conference that's what's next so we're going to go to the all sec First team, there's Stucky and Williams. Really cool to just automatically jump in there. We're still one and two, but we should be for quarterback and halfback. Nixon is a first teamer. Then we have outside linebacker Ryan Stamper. Then we got Givens and Bell and Holden. You look at the second team. Do we have anybody on here? Did you notice South Carolina? Looks like they got a halfback that's really talented. We'll keep on going. Do we got a second teamer anywhere? And it looks like we do not. Looks like Kentucky's got good special teams at least. And that is all I want to see there. Let's go over to Conference Outlook. Here we are. Overall, they got South Carolina, Tulane, Auburn, Florida, Tennessee, and then LSU, and so on and so forth. You look at the East, South Carolina, Florida, Tennessee, Georgia, Kentucky, Vanderbilt. And here's the SEC West. Tulane, then Auburn, LSU, Alabama, Ole Miss, and then Mississippi State at the very bottom. Toughest places to play. It'd be cool if we can get... The Superdome on here. I don't know if that's possible. 
Uh, this moves around. I just don't know if it ever puts in new stadiums. I could be dead wrong. I never really pay attention to it. All right. I think all that's left is recruiting. So let's go into that. And I wrote down just a few notes. Now, I'm going to continue doing the same thing. We got 55 players coming back. If all goes as planned, nobody leaves, nobody comes in, that type of thing, which we know is not the case. We got 15 spots left. But I still just want to go after four guys at the most and just really put our points into them. That way we can have some fun in the offseason getting normally better players. So that's what we're going to do. And according to my list, I really need a defensive end, defensive tackles at least, at least a, a, a couple. Cornerback, if I could find one that really fits what I'm trying to do, I'm really struggling with that. And strong safety. So notice I did not mention anything with regards to offensive guys. Yes, we're still going to look at some of these guys, but we really need to focus on this position. We need to focus on defensive tackle. We need to focus at cornerback. And we need to focus at strong safety. Now, we are reigning national champions. I don't have any restrictions in terms of who to go after. Everybody and their brother should, can be halfway interested in Tulane at this point. But I still want to keep it in our pipelines in the regular season. That's normally what I like to do. Now, one thing I want to see, I'm going to just want to check something really quick. Just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. Okay, I'm not. Okay, let's start off with our pipelines. Alabama is now a pipeline. It wasn't before. Maybe oh, that's interesting. That's actually a good pipeline to have since they're close. But now that's a new pipeline. We'll have to remember that. We should have Florida as a pipeline. And I think maybe Texas and that's it. Of course, here's Louisiana. We're going to look at that one first. Did I miss something? No. Uh, I think, like I said, Texas is the only one that is left. North Carolina is now a pipeline. Not, that wasn't by choice, but we can look at that later. I, I don't care to keep that. It's not that big of a deal. We got to keep Texas as a pipeline. That is obvious. I mean, just no doubt we got to keep it. And I think that should be it. So let's go. Uh, yes, that's it. So let's go over to Louisiana. I always want to start in my home state and see what we can find. Quarterback, it's not a need. I really don't want to bother with quarterbacks until we get to the offseason and just see if we've got to adjust from there. Halfback, we don't need anybody. And again, we are pretty much a top-tier program. I'm only going to go after four- and five-star kids unless I can really find what I'm looking for at a particular position. Fullback, we're good. Wide receiver, I don't know. It, we're kind of, we need some bodies here, kind of, sort of. I, I may want to look at this guy, Shamari Hemingway, which is a credible name. I love his size, 6'4", 208. He's really smart, too. It's kind of hard to find smart wide receivers. I think I'm going to go ahead and just put one on him because you got to remember, we got a couple of senior wide receivers that will be going, so it's probably a good idea to kind of look ahead at that position. We don't need any tight ends. We're good there. Tackle, we're kind of good there. I don't really need anybody. None of these guys really fit what I'm looking for anyways. This guy looks kind of looks the part. He's really big and strong, but we're kind of okay. As you can see here, we got four, but we got a ton of freshmen. So I just don't know if it's a good idea to just really dump some points in there. And again, it's not a big need right now. Our two starters are a sophomore and a freshman, if I'm not mistaken. So we're fine there. Guard is the same way. We're just really young here. And that's a three-star kid. I'm not going to bother. Defensive end. Now, normally, I usually bring a middle linebacker or an outside linebacker down the defensive end. But I would love to find somebody who can fit this a little bit better as a natural defensive end. Unfortunately, I'm not seeing that here. You can tell, look at the squad. That's all you got to look at. 555, 555, 585. That looks really good, right? Well, until you bring in a middle linebacker that's got a 670, 670 on the squad, that's when things get a little bit different. So none of these guys really fit what I'm looking for. I love this guy's speed. I just don't like his strength. So we'll just move on. Defensive tackle is a big need. We don't have anybody here, so we got to move on. Outside linebacker, it says we need an extra guy, so we can go ahead and find somebody, I guess. So that's what we're going to do. I just now realized that I better write that down or I'll keep forgetting. So let me just go put down OLB. Looks like we keep needing more at defensive players, which is fine. Here's a 6'6", 225, 456. I kind of like this kid. Uh, he's not as strong as like this one right here, but he's much slower. I'm going to go ahead and put one on Holland Tucker for now. We may find somebody better. Middle linebacker, I think we're fine here. Uh... Also, you got to remember, we got a couple of those middle linebackers that are true freshmen may move down to defensive end next year. So a defensive end, good. I probably won't find one in the regular season. 
corner, unfortunately, nobody's here. Free safety, un unless this guy is super fast and super smart, I, or at least fast, I'm not going to bother. Like, this kid I probably need to go after, but I could probably find somebody better down the road. But we got bodies there. As you can tell, we got two, a junior and a freshman. Let's see if we can find somebody better. That may be tough, though. Let's go to strong safety. This is more important. Unfortunately, I'm seeing nothing but three-star kids. I mean, this... I keep hitting the left button. Um, I don't know if I'm going to go after this kid. I love his size. He's kind of fast, too. But I'm just going to wait. Let's just go on to some other pipelines. How about that? Let's move to Texas. I think that's our next most important pipeline. Quarterback, I'm not worried about it. Halfback, fullback, wide receiver. I just... Now, this kid looks interesting. Justin Hippolyte, 6'5", 178. I think I'm going to go ahead and just... Let's see how big this kid is. 6'2", 200. Uh, let's just... I just like the look of that kid. Let's just go after him. Uh, tackle, we don't need it. We don't need it. Let's go straight here. 469, his squat's terrible. We're going to pass on that. He's a three-star kid. Defensive tackle, 6'4", 298. Yes, I'm going to go ahead and take a chance on him. Uh, outside linebacker, middle linebacker, we don't need him. Corner, ah, just bad luck on the corner front. Again, I've talked about this a handful of times. That's the one position in our diocese we've really struggled to recruit. Free safety, this guy's too slow. Strong safety, here's a top 50 guy. 446, he's pretty smart. He looks like he's fairly strong, too. I like his height. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put one on Kobe Michael, Meagle, however you want to say that. Let's move on to what's our next most important one? Is it Alabama, Florida or Alabama? Let's go to Florida. That produces a lot more talent, so let's go there. I'm not worried about quarterback here, here. Uh, I'm not, we've already looked at a couple of these guys. Wide receiver wise, like this kid looks pretty good. But I think I'm okay at wide receiver. I want to go over to here. Is there no no natural defense event's gonna look good enough for me? Nobody a defensive tackle. Here's an outside linebacker, 446, 620 on the squat. He is an ideal outside dude. I mean, he would be great. I'm gonna just go ahead and take a chance on him. Middle linebacker, ah, oh, just no corners. Gee whiz. Free safety, uh, not smart enough. He's pretty fast. I like his height. I think I'm going to pass on that one. Strong safety. No, that just doesn't really fit the bill. Let's go over to Alabama is next, I think. It's probably the next most important one. So let's go there. Let's go over to our defensive ends first. I'm just 465. But again, he's just so lightweight. Or he's just not strong enough. Uh, I don't think we'll need him. Uh, let's go deep stack. All right, here we got some bodies. Okay, six feet, three hundred five pounder, Landon Johnson. Yes, absolutely. Here's a two hundred seventy seven pounder, not as strong. This guy's about the same, and I'm going after two of them for now. I think I may pass on these two. I need somebody who's about three hundred pounds and is really strong, and this guy fits the bill. So let's keep on going. I'm okay. Uh, here's another good outside linebacker we can take a chance on. 452C plus. I don't need anybody super strong or, or super big. I need somebody who's fast. 452 is pretty fast. I am going to. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, middle linebacker, I'm not worried about that. Corner, finally, somebody, anything. 511, 61173. That's okay. Um, I wish he was faster and a little bit taller. Now let's just keep going. Free safety, 4-6, too slow. Strong safety, nothing. Let's go over to North Carolina. Then after that, we'll look at like the top four or five players and maybe kind of go from there. Actually, I'm not going to bother with North Carolina. I really don't want that as a pipeline. So what we're going to do, we're going to go back to all states, and let's go over to our real big positions of need. Defensive end, I'm not worried about. We're going to deal with that in the offseason. I want to really focus on cornerback, and strong safety and maybe a free safety. We could find somebody super fast and maybe a defensive tackle. Let's start at corner. Again, my biggest area of need that I just, I'm having trouble with. This guy's really fast. 416. He's 6'1. He's out of Illinois. Let's look at this guy. DJ Johnson out of Hollywood, California, 6'1, 172. Really strong. I probably wouldn't mind at least taking a chance on him. Ohio kid, California, California. 5'11", 6'5", 6'1". Nobody's super tall. But I'll take anybody over 6 feet at this point. As you can tell, all these guys are about 5'1", 6'. Here's a couple 6'3 dudes. 
four three seven, but he's not very smart out of Mississippi. Three star kid, I don't know. I'd rather just not bother. I'd rather get somebody who's super fast and not smart enough. I think it's worth it. We got four spots left. I'd rather just take a chance on a couple of these five star kids and go from there. So, for example, uh, let's take a chance on. Uh, let's go after this kid. I like this kid is much stronger than the other one. Four two four still stupid fast. So let's just go after that one. Let's go look at strong safety. I want to find somebody who's really fast and tall. Looks like the fastest one by far is this kid right here out of Hawaii, Grant Schmidt. I hope I said that correctly. 439, the rest of these guys, not as fast, so it's obvious why he's considered the top player of the bunch. He's the strongest of the bunch. He's the smartest of the bunch. Let's just take a chance on him. We got two spots left. Let's look at, if I could find a free safety that's blazing fast. I'm not seeing it, though. None of these guys are fast. I'm just really surprised. I really need a fast free safety. Here are a couple 439 guys. Here's one out of Louisiana. I guess this is the best we can do. I, for some reason, I thought there were faster free safeties out there. So I guess it's obvious we need to go and put one on him. My bad. For some reason, I just thought there were much faster free safeties. So let's go one on him. So we got one spot left. Uh, I may look at defensive tackle and see if we can find somebody that really fits the need. We're going after him. All these guys are under 300 pounds. California. Hmm. 6'4", 295. Who's the strongest of the bunch? Looks like this kid right here. 470 and 670 on the squat. That's really good. 6'4", 289 out of Jersey. We're already going after two defensive tackles, so I'm okay with maybe skipping that. Let's go find one ridiculously good skill player. Maybe a quarterback or a tight end, something like that. I think that would be a good idea. Maybe there's a defensive end that looks really good. 620, 620. I could go after one of these. A Michigan kid or a Kansas kid. That Kansas kid's not too far from Louisiana. Kind of, sort of. He's still not nowhere near as strong as some of these uh, middle linebackers that got uh, 670, 670, 680 and such on the squat. Uh, we could try going after a natural defensive end, but I really don't want to. I think we're just better off just moving somebody down. So let me think. Tight end, all these guys look not fast enough. This guy may fit the part. He's a North Carolina kid. Uh, wide receiver, we're already looking at a couple. Fullback, I'm not worried about getting another one. I'm not going to waste any points off or regular season-wise. Let's keep going. Halfback, we're good here. Let's see if we can find a future incredible quarterback, if they're interested. If not, then we can just move on to somebody else. Let's look. A kid out of Washington, Ohio. We could take a chance on... Here's a, pop, uh, a pocket passer. I don't need a speedster. I just want somebody who just really fits the part. Somebody who can really throw. I need somebody who can make throws more than anything else. We have no clue if any of these guys can throw the ball or not. Kid out of Arizona. Here's a kid out of Missouri, 488. Kind of small. I wouldn't mind finding a lefty. That'd be fun. Like This kid out of Ohio would be pretty cool to play with. Uh, I don't know. I, I may take a chance on this pocket passer, maybe. Uh, this, I mean, this kid right here out of Washington, you know who he looks like. He is like the spitting image of uh, our quarterback from Hawaii. I already forgot his name, Troy Petty. That's who that is. Uh, but I'm okay with getting somebody else. Let's just take a chance on this Florida kid. I just really like his height. It looks. Um, let's hope he can really throw the ball. We'll say it. So let's just put a scholarship on him. All right, that is all of the scholarships. So let's go into the play week. We are going to simulate week one. We will hurry this up, and then we were going to head in to week two, and then we're going to look at these recruits, and we're going to narrow down to the four guys we really want to go after. So let's go over to end season recruiting. And here are the 12. First thing I want to look at is positive pitches anywhere. If there is a positive pitch, we might as well just go ahead and put one on that guy. So far, I'm not really seeing it. Here is one. Good deer. Good deer. <laughs> Wide receiver, Shamari Hemingway, local kid, four-star, hands is A-minus. That's good enough. I like his height. I think that's an obvious. Let's put 25 on this kid. Again, I don't I want to just do more, no more than four, so we'll do 25 for him. All right, next up, defensive tackle, outside linebacker, and that is it. No other positive pitches. So let's keep on going, and let's go to the very top. I think we need to go all hands on deck, 
on probably this kid right here. We're at, looks like we're in a good spot right in the middle of the pack. And he is probably the best looking strong safety we're ever going to find. Honestly, he's a five-star kid, so it's pretty obvious. Let's go ahead and put 25 on him. Let's look at this quarterback. Yeah, I mean, look at him. I mean, this guy is a future stud. Now, when will he play? It may be two years from now. Is it worth going after him now? Or do we need to go after somebody else instead? We just looked at We just picked somebody who just had an incredible arm. I kind of want to go after this kid, but let's just wait for now. Let's see if we can find some other needs. Okay, here's an outside linebacker, Trey Pittman. It says we need somebody here. 446, pretty good awareness, and he's a pipeline kid. Uh, let's just keep going. Uh, free safety, 439. Uh, we, yes, we probably need to go after him just because he's a local kid. I don't mind going that uh, after him, and he's apparently the best free safety out there at the moment. So let's do 25 on him. So the other spot has got to go to somebody. I prefer it to be one of those defensive tackles. Like, here's his corner out of California. We're kind of at the bottom of his list, and he's on the other side of the country. So I don't mind skipping him. We're going after one receiver already. Uh, I could go after this kid, too, but we don't need to, if that makes sense. Let's go after, let's look at this outside linebacker. Can of Alabama looks really good. His awareness isn't all that great. Let's keep going. Uh, we're already going after the other strong safety. So I'm not worried about the Meagle kids. I'm not even going to bother. We probably need to... I can go 20-20-20-20. We can do five guys. Let's pick one of these defensive tackles. This is a big need for us. We can go after this kid, the 6'4", 298 out of Texas. C-minus awareness, but he's pretty strong. 455, 605. Or we can go after this guy. This guy looks just better across the board. Let's go put 20 on him. And let's just go ahead and take a chance and let's do... Let's go after five guys. That's what we'll do. I'll stretch it to five. We'll do this, and we'll do this. And I think it's worth taking the chance. Uh, again, let's just look at our roster really quick. And I got time to change my mind if needed for the next game. Stucky is a sophomore. He'll be back for another year. Stewart, a lot of these guys are probably going to transfer out. A couple of them will, I would think. It's just so rare to find a quarterback that's got that good of an arm. So I think it's worth going after that kid. I just want him. That plus he's a pipeline. I want to keep the Florida pipeline. I am willing to go after him. I'm okay with that. Let's just do that. We'll put 20 on that dude. So here's what we're going after. Grant Schmidt, the best strong safety in the country, apparently, out of Hawaii. Quarterback, Dewan Jones. And then we got uh, free safety, Michael Miller, the local kid. Then we have... Wide receiver, Shamari Hemingway, the best name of the bunch, local kid. And then we're going to go after the best defensive tackle of our list, and that is Landon Johnson out of Alabama, which is now a pipeline. At least it is supposed to be. All right, that is it. In our next video, we are going to play our first game of the season, and that is against Arkansas. Should be a lot of fun. This is the team we replaced. Hopefully we can take care of business. Hopefully we, uh, the SEC won't regret replacing us if Arkansas beats us. But it should be a whole lot of fun, and I can't wait to get into it. All right, guys. I'll talk to you later.